Hi, my name is Leah Pinsky and I'm the Executive Director at Art Encounter. We are so honored this month to be partnering with Fleetwood Jordan Theater and their program called Black History 24 7 365. And we are going to be interviewing three artists in Evanston that we think you should know. So today I am pleased to highlight the work of Angela Williams. She's a designer, a painter, a multimedia artist living in Evanston who for 28 years has also brought her creativity and design expertise to leadership positions that she's held at the Museum of Science and Industry. So I want to ask you first, tell me a little bit about your upbringing and your early influences in the path that you have now taken to become an artist. Yeah, well, um, like a lot of people, you know, you kind of know when you're a kid what you want to do. And my mom was an artist and um, I'm originally from St. Louis, so, um, and an only child. And so my mom would take me to the St. Louis Art Museum um, on a regular, you know, basis. And so uh, as a little kid, she put me into um, some, you know, activities that they have at the museum. And she just really encouraged me to pursue the arts. Um, and so that was really, you know, really my beginnings. And I used to make little puppets and put on puppet shows and just all kinds of little fun artistic projects as a little kid. Um, and then um, I was introduced to uh, Matisse at a very young age. Uh, there was a big show at the St. Louis Art Museum of his work. And I was there doing like a tour, um, you know, like on a Saturday afternoon program. And so I got to see his work and learn a lot about it. And I was really captured by the paper cutout series, the jazz series. It was really just everything to me. And it still is one of my favorites. Um, and so I think that's really kind of get, got me started. I think I wanted to be a painter. Um, and as a kid, my mom, we would go often to uh, different um, summer outdoor art exhibitions and spent a lot of time there as a kid. So that, I think that's, those are kind of my two primary. I was really interested in arts of Africa because you know, being of African descent and not really seeing a lot of that as a little kid, um, but then starting to kind of dig in and going to African festivals as a young person. Um, and then especially once I moved to Chicago, they have that amazing African festival, festival of the arts that I would go to every year. So those two kind of pieces, the graphic work that I do as a visual communication, uh, communications background, um, and then my interest in um, all things like Egyptian and um, ancient African art, as well as um, just a lot of color. I love color. So let's look at some of your work. I know that you've uh, worked in a variety of media and you love playing with uh, working with watercolor. I love the immediacy of watercolor. Um, you can put something down and kind of move it around and move the paper around. And then depending on like if I have my lamp really close, I can dry it really fast and kind of keep moving. And that's one of the things I love about watercolor. What's the size of this piece? Um, yeah, this piece is pretty big. It's about 28 to 30 inches square on watercolor paper. I also discovered around this time watercolor pencils. My mom bought me a set of watercolor pencils. And typically you just work with watercolor in the tube or like in a little palette. Um, but I love the pencils because you can really get a lot of um, intensity. And then you can scrub the color around on the paper or you can also be um, you know, a little bit lighter with it. This piece is called The Sacred Wisdom of Ancient Africa. And it was purchased by a uh, husband and wife, the Granthams, who are really great friends and collectors. Um, and I was really excited because this is the first like big piece that I've ever sold before. Um, and I think it was at an art fair. I think it was at the Hyde Park Art Fair. And so I was super excited uh, to do this piece. And you kind of see all of my interests all kind of smashed up together around African history. Um, I love African textiles. There's a piece right behind me um, here on the wall and some masks. So those are all things that kind of capture my interest. So you see a lot of that in, reflected in this work. And then right in the middle is a, a Ghanaian piece. Um, it's a sculptural piece of a, of a king on a horse. So it kind of tells a story a little bit um, and the title, The Sacred Wisdom of Ancient Africa, because I think there's so much mystery, um, at least that I don't know about uh, traditional African um, art um, and how it's used in life. Um, and so just experimenting with those shapes and patterns and color and texture. 
Yeah, so let's look at some of your, uh, or at least one or two maybe, of the improvisational studies that are collage-based. Um, yeah, this is actually one of, uh, one of my favorite pieces, I think because it has a lot of layers. <clears throat> this really started kind of as an experiment. So what would happen is you'll see like the first work that we talked about is pretty big. So I'd start and I get committed to these pretty big paintings, you know, and then I kind of go smaller sometimes just because I like to move quickly. Um, and so I would start a painting and it, and the, this is my language, it kind of goes sideways, like a section of it, the color I didn't like or the composition didn't work out the way I thought it would look once I started adding color to it. So I would start cutting it apart and just was kind of goofing around, you know, and then I love paper. I love all things paper as a graphic designer. Um, and I love different types of paper. So I would find myself in the art supply store, just buying paper just because it just looks beautiful. Like the, um, the Japanese uh, washi papers and all the handmade papers. Um, I've, I love corrugated papers. I love like newsprint. Um, and so I just started creating this collage series. I was interested in just kind of layering and the same kind of a approach I do with my paintings, I wanted to do in collage. Um, so you'll see like there's copper wire, there's um, corrugated paper. So sometimes I would get things in the mail that has interesting like sheer paper and I would just save it or gum wrapper, like the silver part of the gum wrapper um, or newsprint. And I just collect all these in a little box. And so I started uh, making these little collages and I would give them away actually as, as um, like small gifts, you know, or uh, greeting cards. Um, and then friends were so I'm like, these are really nice. You should sell them when you have your shows. So, um, and so I, I just started experimenting more and I just would create a series at a time. So I have some music on and then I build a bunch at one time. And so they might all kind of have like oranges and coppers and browns and newsprint. And I just kind of build a series or a next series might have like blue, like if I'm thinking if it's a summer day, and I'm try trying to reflect like the mood and the time of that day. So uh, you may see like a lot of blue and you'll see like cutouts. And again, kind of ref referring back to my first love of Matisse's work um, with his uh, jazz series. Um, and so you'll see kind of that reflected. So this is just one of those. And I call them improvisational compositions because they're completely improv. I don't plan them necessarily like when I do with my watercolor drawings and paintings um, those are very planned out you know like I draw them in pencil and then kind of really get everything I want down and then I go into color these are just like I cut it I arrange it and then I glue it and then I just keep going and move on they feel to me they feel almost sacred mm -hmm. they're giving intention to things that we might not usually give thought to or give attention to a scrap of paper, a seg you know, a fragment from the newspaper. Exactly. You know, that's the thing, like, um, you know, we get so much mail every day and there's someone that sat down like me or others that, you know, design the graphics and are really intentional about these things or, you know, people write articles and newspapers papers and they collect stats on paper, you know, about like the stock market or the weather patterns or whatever. So you'll see like these snippets of things. How has the pandemic and any of the events of 2020 impacted your, your work or your process as an artist? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, it has tremendously impacted my work. I think probably not unlike a lot of people, having a hard time focusing on other stuff. Um, so I was invited to do a show uh, with Lisa Delegatoni, who's a great Evanston arts supporter. Mm -hmm. um, and she reached out to me. I'm a part of a group called Evanston Made. One of the things I love about Evanston is great artistic community here. Um, and so in any case, she invited me to participate in a show. And she said, do you have any new work? And I said, like, no, I don't. She's like, well, it's a great opportunity for you to try to do something new. And I did, I just committed myself to it. Um, so I created this uh, three panel series and I really wanted it to be reflective of the time, right? There's so much going on um, with all the protests, of course, with George Floyd and um, you know, um, inequality and, and all of the racial disparities that we're talking about. And, um, a lot of disharmony and just trying to reflect on that work in a way that doesn't feel 
um, I don't know, typical, but you know, is in a vocabulary of my style. I was thinking about the civil rights uh, and, and uh, civil war actually um, around this time. And I did, a, I did a quick research about the period of called reconstruction. Um, and it was a really short time in American history when African-Americans were, um, you know, able to be part of the democratic process, you know, um, and going into Congress. And, and it lasted for 13 years, three months, three weeks, and two days. So this work is really, it reflects that. Um, and it's just about this idea of ancestral memory. Um, and then this idea of the power and the promise and the beauty of the rising energy of now. So kind of what you see uh, you know, the circle, I love circles and, you know, just this idea of things moving around in time. Um, you know, we mark our lives around a clock and a calendar, right? Um, and then shapes that are familiar with us. And then that top left kind of feels like a flag, like someone's flying a flag. Um, and all of these pieces come together. It's almost kind of machine-like. Um, so, and then you see in the center there some African symbols. And I think particularly for me as an African-American as just trying to make sense of this age that we're in, um, being respectful and um, responsive to not only what's happening now, but also in reference to and in deference to like our history, right? Um, and a lot of African-Americans are looking at their lives, not just in the American narrative, but also in a global perspective um, and kind of bringing those together to think differently and think um, about possibility. Um, I want to thank you so much for talking to me today. I'm really honored to have a chance to talk to you, Angela. Thank you so much. I'm really excited and I appreciate the opportunity and it's been really great.